Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This week we are going to be painting a Sons of Horus Marine in Mark III armor. We're going to be starting off with some scale 75 colors, specifically to spare green through the airbrush. And then we're also going to follow that up with some Innsmouth blue just to get started off. Uh, as you can see, I've got a Mark III Marine here. It's all primed up with Steinal Res Black. And let's get started. All right, I'm gonna give this an all-over coat of despair green, mostly from the top and a bit from the front to emulate a bit of the light. And we're really trying to saturate this in over the black primer. Now it's gonna be dark. We're not gonna get a whole lot of brightness out of this, but our next couple of layers will help that. All right, now I've loaded up that Innsmouth Blue, also from Scale 75. And I'm gonna take this in slightly more of a directional approach. So mostly top down, a little bit from the front, and making sure to hit any of the exposed areas, which should be catching a bit of reflective light. And this is just kind of by eye. There's no real science to this, just kind of make it look good. one more big splash of color. I'm going to add some Gauss Blaster Green into the mix. This is one very high tone Citadel paint. I enjoy this for not just edge highlighting, but also for a lot of highlight airbrush tones as well. some of the high areas, some of the areas that are going to catch some light, and just doing some angular fades kind of across the faceplate, for example, down the backs of the legs, etc., and just kind of get that up to the level of color and light you think you are happy with. Just give the shoulder pads a little bit of light, a little bit of a highlight. I'm taking some Secret Weapon Rubber Highlight through the airbrush and just hitting the very top of it for a very nice soft, kind of almost like matte finish fade on the top for some light.
and of course hitting some of the shadows again, this time with some Vallejo model color black. It's kind of taking back some of the color a little bit, some of the light just a bit, making it very dark and contrasty in some of the areas. next part let's switch it up you know quick break and I'm gonna come in and start hitting some of these metallics mostly it's gonna be using a bit of dark star metallics and we're starting off with a bit of their blue steel this is a very dark metallic to start with synthetic brush to fill these in and kind of block them out as quickly as possible. For the shoulder pads, I'm going to add just a splash of Regency Gold here, also from Dark Star. It's pretty easy to apply. Pretty quick, I really like the color here, and it's nice and dark. I believe some of the Sons of Horus heraldry has their shoulder pad rims as steel uh, instead of gold. You can do that as well with the blue steel, but in this case, don't like doing a little bit of gold. of Magimix over all of our metals here, both the blue steel and the emergency gold will give them just a little bit more character and a little bit of shading and kind of knock down the luster a bit. So here's a really fun and challenging part of this mini. It is a very basic setup. It's a marine in power armor, but to add a little bit of a challenge, we're gonna do some freehand. And to do so, I'm gonna get out my Ulthwin Gray from Citadel. We're gonna freehand the Eye of Horus here on the shoulder pad. Now, just to let you know, 
I have not done this before, and I probably should have practiced the freehand ahead of time on something like a piece of cardboard, a piece of paper, or even a piece of plastic or another marine. However, just said screw it, threw caution to the wind, gave it a shot, and I think I ended up liking the results of it. Now I'm taking this Ulthwind Gray straight over the black, shaded with a little bit of the Secret Weapon Rubber Highlight. That is okay. Um, just make sure that you build it up. And it is kind of thinned out to a point where I can put about two layers on without it becoming too thick and adding any sort of texture. Now if I get a little smidge of this white outside of where I want it to be, I can add a little bit of black right over it and it will blend right in. And in fact, I'll tighten up some of the lines by the end of it by adding a little bit of black here. look there. I think overall the eye is looking pretty good after a little bit of futzing and we've got ourselves a shoulder and so Next up we're going to do a little bit of edge highlighting on the mini and to do so we're going to go back to both our Innsmouth blue and our Gauss Blaster green. Now Gauss, Gauss Blaster green is normally an edge highlight all by itself and we'll use that in the areas where we have the highest value along the edge from the rest of the paint so we get that contrast. And then in some of the areas where it's a little bit darker, we'll lean a little bit more towards Innsmouth Blue. And I'm just kind of blending those together. I tend to think of edge highlighting as another opportunity of blend. You're just blending in a two-dimensional sense instead of a three-dimensional plane. And you can use that to get some really interesting and very nice lighting effects along hard panels and lines like this. Don't be afraid to kind of get in there with some of the existing colors. And if you want some pops of highlight, if it's a very well lit area or something's very shiny, you can always take it up to white at the very highest level. So in this case, if I wanted to, I can take a little bit of white and put it into the Gauss Blaster Green. But overall, I'm liking just bringing it all the way up to Gauss Blaster Green. Keeping in mind that the base coat on here, even though it's been airbrushed with that same green and that same Innsmouth Blue, it's going to be a little bit toned down overall compared to what it would be brushed on directly.
All right, one thing I need to take care of before I finish up this mini is I am going to use a little bit of Dark Star Pewter to highlight the steel tones around the mini on all of the little areas that we've done with steel. I'll add a dot of black and highlight a circle around it for the gun barrel. I know that really gets under Jan's skin, so that's why I do it. And overall, I'm fairly happy with how this mini has come out. One thing I have skipped and I want to make a note of real quick is that to do the eye lenses, we put in a very small smidge of burnt red, followed by bold pearl red, and spot highlighted again with Gauss Blaster Cream. Get that lens effect. I also normally make a quickie base for all of my minis on my videos, and this is no exception, but I did not record that process. You'll see it here at the very end, but to do so, I used steel, a little bit of a ghrelin earth, which is a crackle paint, some olive drab, some black for some shading and vignetting, as well as some rust pigment from Tamiya on both the base and a little bit on the feet and legs of the marine here, just to give it a little bit of a dried, weathered look, like wet mud had been drying over steel. So, in the video you can see I'm um, finishing up the last little bits of the highlights, so I want to make sure that metallic is solid where it's at, it's all visible, it's kind of shining through. There are very subtle edge highlights of that Innsmouth blue and Gauss Blaster Green on the bolter. That's all I need to give it a little bit of a hint that a Sons of Horus Marine is carrying it. Let's take a look at the final result on the base. Alright, here it is. Pretty happy with how it looks. Really happy with the color selection and color matching, and I'm even happy with how the pigment came across. Thank you so much for joining me once more. I'll be back again next week with another video. And until then, enjoy painting, have a great week. Thank you.